these two haven't half grown from when I got them. They were quite uh, skinny little pot belly things that looked like they, um, they were maybe farrowed outside and uh, were a bit short of food when I bought them. But uh, they have an half fattened up. I mean, this one's put on some hell of a amount of weight in a short period. I don't know whether how many of you follow the videos that whether you can tell how much they've changed. But yeah, they'll just eat whatever you give them. Doesn't whatever you give them, they'll just clear it off and just stand there squealing for more. So I'm feeding them probably more than what I would normally feed um, the ginger pigs. I don't know what they are, whether they're like a large white or um, some sort of a commercial white crossed with a... I don't really know a lot about pigs, whether they're crossed with like a British lop or something, I don't know. This one's a hell of a thing, that one's a bit more plain, a bit more pot bellied. But, yeah, they, they're sort of shaping up into be reasonably nice pigs now. Hard life, isn't it? I'm just having a bit of a clean out, you can't see a lot because it's dark in here, but I've just scooped out all the muck out of uh, my empty pen and I'm just trying to debate whether to take all the gates out. It doesn't seem like that long ago that I took them all out and washed them, or whether I might just slap a bit of oil on the rusty bits of this gate. I might wash this middle gate because this one gets the most amount of muck against it. Uh, and then think about getting some more and I just can't decide whether to get go to the market again and just have a gamble and t see what's there like I did with these or um, get some more of those ginger ones uh, what are they, Jorox I don't mind, I quite like the Jorox it's just the, yeah, they're a bit pricey she wants top money for them because they're, like, they're almost like pedigree things whereas I'm, I'm not bothered what I have I'm just only going in the freezer and um, these were pretty poor quality wieners when I got them, but look at them now, you know. Give them plenty of food and they're away. So, anyway, it's a job done. This was, this is sort of ready for, I'm not gonna uh, go mad cleaning it out this time because I don't think it really needs it. But yeah, it's actually quite nice out now. It's, we've, had, we've had a horrible morning. It's, uh, we've had hailstorm, heavy rain and very strong winds. Well, we're, we're having, we've been having strong winds the last couple of days. It's like the wind changed direction last night. Um, and it's been blowing in this, this big cattle shed rather than it normally blows in that one. That's one good thing about having, uh, having open-sided sheds facing both directions because then if, you know, you can always look on the bright side, can't you? Because if it's blowing in that shed, it's definitely not blowing in that shed, so... But, yeah, it's, but yeah, it's lovely now. Just wish it would stay like this, stop raining. But, anyway, I'm going to tip this, this uh, load of muck. Yeah, I sold me, uh, sold my sheep this morning, market. How well they did, they did very well. Well, I was happy. Um, more than half of them weren't finished, you know. He, he graded them and he said, You know, most of these are, are, aren't finished, you know. Do you still want to sell them? And I was like, Yeah, blow it. Well, uh, he said, Well, it's worth giving them a go because it's not a lot, not a lot of sheep in. They're obviously uh, a bit sparse at, at the moment. So, um, I can't understand it. My, my, the, the ones that were fat, like four, they were like 45 kilo, did very well, uh, considering they were just, you know, up country mules. And the rejected ones that were like, some of them were 40 kilo, some of them were, some of the little tiny ones were only like 30 kilo. Even they did amazingly well. They just kept bidding, and I was thinking, bloody hell. And I think everyone was shocked, even the auctioneer was a bit shocked at how far they went with them. And then there were some small, small sheep that were finished, fat, like Welsh things, 35 kilo Welsh things, that um, 
all nice and uniformed in a group the same size and they only went for quite a bit less money than my rejected unfinished ones so I don't know maybe there's a there was just a demand today for um, you know like a large framed unfinished uh, animal lamb but can't make any sense of it but yeah I'm pretty I'm pretty chuffed they've done all right so I've just got 20 left I'm just I don't know what to do with them really whether to well, there's plenty of grass kicking around, so there's, and there's plenty of places for them to go, so it seems daft bringing them in, really, but I did ponder whether to make a pen up in this shed, in this pole barn, take a few bits of machinery out and just make a pen, and just dump them in there and give them a bit, of, a bit of creep for maybe two weeks and just see whether they just fatten up a bit. But while there's, there's places for them to graze, I just don't know where it's worth it really, we'll just keep hang on to them a bit longer. Um, there was hardly any spring lambs in the market. Uh, there was only a couple of pens and they were like they were you know they were fleshed but they were they were only like just ready. They were like good big spring lambs. Um, so it's not exactly like you're really competing with them. Not in my market anyway, I don't know whether there's many about in other parts of the country but so, yeah, what to do now? It's a bit windy and a bit late in the day to be going and doing any more of my greenhouse. So I don't know, I might get my pecker out and have a go. I've got some office work to do, but it's, now it's so nice out, I don't really want to go in the house. I'm thinking that I might have a and try and smash up some of this rubble for an hour or so because if I do end up building a shed where my bales are this is probably where I'm going to end up having to put a stack of bales uh, who knows whether it's going to happen or not and I'm half wondering whether because I'm not going to not going to be able to get any muck spread whether to tip muck here uh, in which case I need to be able to sort, this is a bit rough and ready to be backing over really with tyres. Um, bits of rebar in it and it's just a bit too, it's not quite flat enough so it wants, but it's, I think it's high enough especially in certain places so it wants just running over and just smashing up a bit and then I could do with getting some finer uh, crush just to finish it off and then I back right up into this field and make a bit of a pile of muck here can't decide what to do because we took we took this fence down because it used to come across here when when I dug this out to fill it in and I can't decide whether to put the fence back up or not uh, at the moment I'm not thinking of putting any sheep in here I'm thinking of this little patch of ground down here to just mow it and bale it there's so much grass on it now and I've got I put loads of muck on it um, so I'm not, I'm not really in a massive rush to, uh, to get it fenced. I don't think I'm going to put cattle on it until... Well, until certainly after... Uh, after first cut, whenever that'll be. Seems a long way off, but in theory it's only like a couple of weeks off. But So yeah, I might go and get my extension lead and... Uh, or check my wrap trap while I'm here. We've got all the we've got a lot of rats that come in and out of this pig shed. I'm behind the pig shed now, and they climb up they climb up the loft inside, come through the uh, corrugation gaps, um, and then drop into the gutter, and then they run along the gutter. I found this the other day because I come out here and watch them come out, and then they get to the end of the gutter, jump off the uh, end of the shed, climb down this wall and go live in this log, this is a log shed. So there's, there's a lot of rats living in that blooming stack of logs. So what I did was I found a little nipper rat trap. And, uh, oh it's not gone off. found a little rat trap in my workshop. 
so I just put it in the gutter so I thought I'd catch them running along but to be fair it looks like it's a bit bent it needs a bit of adjusting Yeah, I don't know what you can see if I've done anything, but I've, uh, I've just spent an hour at it. I haven't done a lot here because it's actually low there. So I've sort of done this area here, which is the bit that's a little bit high, I think. So I might just be able to like knock it about a bit with a digger and track it in and get it down to where I want it. Most of it smashes up all right, but you can't touch curb stones. Uh, don't know what they're made out of, but you could peck them for bloody hours and that, they won't, they don't even think about cracking. So yeah, if you want a really good concrete yard, ask them for whatever they make curbs out of. Because yeah, bloody hell, that stuff doesn't break. These things. Yeah. Perfect solid things. So yeah, it's quite chuffed actually. It's just started raining, so I need to put my electric away. That spoiled it a bit. Well, I mean, it was getting dusty anyway. I'm glad for it, really. Just wet the ground. So, yeah, it's still windy. Right, well, I'm going to do some office work now. Happy days. So the next day, again now, it's a bloody lovely day today. And uh, we've been TB testing, they've come, the vets have been and jabbed all the, these three pens here. I think these ones are probably, because we have to, because we're in a low TB risk area, we have to test, uh, post test, post move test animals that come on from a, uh, from a higher risk areas. Um, but they normally send you letters uh, and tell you exactly which ones need doing uh, but they, they seem to have stopped sending the letters out so I sort of just buried my head a bit but speaking to one of my neighbours it sounds as though this, you're expected to do it but you're expected to just uh, keep track of it all yourself um, and if you don't do it, you could get a fine. So I thought, well, I better get on it because you're supposed to do it between 60 and 120 days of them being on your holding. So the youngest ones are just gone 60 days. The middle pen would be all right, but these are, uh, I haven't worked it out, but they could be a little bit overdue. So we'll see whether or not I get in trouble, but. Um, anyway, yeah, they've been. I just noticed today while I, while I was helping the vets catch them that they're really digging into some of these timbers. And uh, I did have the idea a while ago, I might try painting some just black oil on the uh, on it to see whether it'd stop them licking. So I've just done that little bit, but <laughs> so far <laughs> they seem to love it. <clears throat> Oh, you think it'd be horrible, wouldn't you? Bit of glare on this camera. I didn't go mad because I thought, well, just in case they do uh, actually like it, uh, I'll just make the job make it even worse. Do more harm than good, sort of thing. But yeah, I'm surprised. I did, thought they'd hate the taste of that. That's just black engine oil. Look at that, actually chewing at the wood now. Well, I am very surprised. I didn't think they would like the taste of that. So yeah, fail. Well, I've answered the question. I'm sure everyone was wondering. It was on the top of everyone's mind, wondering, uh, would they lick black oil? But the answer is yes, they will. So we'll, uh, I'll keep an eye on that piece of wood and just see whether, it, uh, whether they lick right through it. 
buggers. That's annoying anyway. So yeah, that's what we've been doing today. So they'll be back on Friday to uh, read them. <clears throat> um, we sus they suspect, just as my friend suspected, that this limmy in here, oh, it's laid down now. It's it's over. It's behind that that black one. The the, gi the ginger, the smaller of the two ginger ones, uh, is maybe got a bit of BVD because it's just gone downhill. It, this is actually the first time I've ever seen it lying down. Every time I've ever come in here in the past week, it's always been stood at the trough. Uh, munching away on corn never it just never stops eating and if you put fresh stuff in it's the first one there right behind you tuck it into it but it's just there you are standing up now it's just gone to skin and bone it, it, this one in front of it i can't remember it was matched with i can't remember which one it was now i have to have a look at my records but it was in a pen with that other ginger one and one of these black limbs uh, and it was exactly the same size as the black one which I think could have been that one and now it's slowed small and it's really gone backwards it's just sad um, but yeah I don't think there's a great deal you can do about it I mean, it's encouraging to see it eating all the time, but it's obviously not really doing it any good. It's not like it's scouring, it's not mucky or anything, so... Yeah, anyway. <coughs> what, what a day it is today. It's like... It's almost like we're, having, we're taking one step forward. We have like one nice day, and then, you know, and then a horrendously wet day. And then another nice day, and then a horrendously wet day. It was a, there's a, some sort of a tit going in and out of that bird box. Anyway, I'll go and find something else to do. Bye for now.